Hello and welcome to Fishing Tutorials. This video is going to be about how to float fish. The first float rig we're going to show you is perfect for most styles of still water float fishing. A little bit later in this video we're going to look at how to find the depth, casting, sinking your line, loose feeding and stuff like that. But for the moment, let's take a look at how to tie a simple float fishing rig which is perfect for all still waters. To tie the waggler rig, you will need your main line, this is four pound breaking strain, a waggler float like this one, a selection of split shot, some line which is lighter than your main line, this is three pound breaking strain, your hook of choice, a size 14 is a good starting point, and finally, don't forget your scissors. The first thing to do is tie a hook length. This is a lighter section of line attached to your hook. Using a hook length means that if you get snagged, you won't break your main line and lose your float. On one end, you'll need to tie a hook. We like to use a half blood knot. Pass the line through the eye, then wrap the tag around the line around seven times. Before passing the tag back through the hole you created next to the hook. Wet the line with saliva to avoid friction melting the line and then pull the knot tight. Finally, trim the tag end nice and neatly. With the hook now on your line, you'll need to tie an overhand loop knot at the other end of the hook length. This will allow you to connect it to your main line. To tie an overhand loop knot, fold the line back on itself, then create a loop in the doubled up material. Pass the end through the loop and then back through it a second time. Before you pull the knot tight, wet it as usual. Now you have a finished hook length. Take your main line and thread on a float. Once the float is on your line, you can attach your hook link. The way to do this is to tie another overhand knot, but in the end of your main line. If you just want to practice your knot tying, feel free to check out the playlist on our channel called How to Tie Fishing Knots. On those videos we show how to tie the knots but with bright yellow braids so they're much easier to follow. With a loop at the end of your main line and your hook length, you can join the two together. Pass the hook length loop over the main line loop, then put your hook through the main line loop. This joins the stronger line to the weaker line effectively and allows you to switch hook lengths when you need to throughout your session. Now lock your float with split shot. Normally a float will stay on the side how much weight it needs to cock it, although floats do vary so don't just go by that. We prefer to test the float in the margins or in a container before we go fishing. Here I've taken four number one shots and used them either side of the float. When pinching on split shot you can use your fingers, but to make sure it grips properly I usually use my teeth to make sure it's on firmly. Alternatively and more safely, the handle on your scissors can be used to pinch the shot together. By placing most of your weight either side of the float, it makes casting easier as the shot directs your float and makes it more aerodynamic. Your remaining allowance of split shot can be spread down the line. In this case, I'm going to put smaller number four shot spread equally apart to create a slow natural fall to the bait. Remember, you may need to experiment with the number of shot you use to ensure your float is correctly shotted. Shotting your float correctly. This float has too little shot. This one, however, has too much. The ideal amount of split shot will dot the float down to a centimetre or two, making the float visible but also sensitive, a fish being able to pull it under with minimal resistance. And there you have it, a finished Waggler float rig. You may like to experiment with different styles of float, so what I'll do now is explain a few of the types of waggler float that you can use in your fishing. In this rig demonstration, we used a straight waggler. It's the perfect float to start with, and it is nicely visible even at distance. Insert waggler floats have a finer tip. This makes them very precise and allows them to detect very subtle bites. They are best used when fishing closer in and in calm conditions. Puddle chuckers or pellet wagglers are short, dumpy little floats, providing good visibility and buoyancy. 
They are perfect for fishing up in the water when feeding little and often to draw fish up closer to the surface. Because of their shape, they don't dive too deep into the water on impact, making them perfect to avoid spooking carp, which are up near the surface. The rig that we just tied works great on still water. However, if you want to fish in flowing water, you'll need to use a similar rig, but with a different type of float. You'll want to use a top and bottom float, rather than a waggler. Waggler floats are attached at the bottom, which means they cast well and help your main line sink beneath the surface. On a stream or fast flowing river though, you want to be able to hold the float back whilst it not get dragged underneath the surface. Because the waggler is attached at the bottom, if you hold it back in flowing water, it will drag down beneath the surface. A top and bottom style float rides up and stays up on the surface even when you pull on the line. There are of course many, many different varieties of top and bottom style float, but I'll run through the key ones now. Stick float. For use when fishing fairly close to the bank in medium flows, especially for shy biting species whilst using small baits. Avon float. For use in faster flowing or turbulent water. The bulbous body is very buoyant and enables more shot to be used. Ideal when needing to get the bait down in faster water. Loafer or chubber float. For good visibility and buoyancy in very fast or turbulent water. Ideal when letting your float drift a long way downstream as they are very easy to see. Also good for using with big baits like bread, worms or spam. So with float choices discussed and a very simple rig tied up, now let's look at shotting patterns. A shotting pattern is the way that you spread out the split shot along your line. The two main ones though are strung out and bulked. A strung out shotting pattern consists of many small shot equally spaced down your line, like this. Strung out shotting patterns are great when you don't really know what depth the fish are gonna be in, and you're happy to catch fish of all sizes at any depth. The strung out nature of the shotting pattern simply means that when the bait falls, it falls fairly naturally, and ensures that any fish feeding near the surface, middle water, or near the bottom, will equally have a chance of taking the bait as your bait falls through the water. However, there are times where you need to bulk your shot together like this. If you're fishing in very deep water and the majority of the fish are feeding near the bottom, there's no point having a strung out shotting pattern and waiting ages for your bait to come down and reach the bottom where the fish are. Instead, by putting your shot together tightly in a bulk, it will bomb the bait to the bottom, get it to the fish quicker and ensure that you get faster bites. Another occasion when you might like to use a bulk of shot instead of a strung out shotting pattern is when there's lots of small fish near the surface and the bigger ones are near the bottom. Now obviously you'll want to catch the big ones, so put those shot tightly together and it will pull the bait down to the bottom faster, reaching the fish that you actually want to catch. Another thing to keep in mind when fishing a bulk of shot is it can create a little bit more resistance to a fish when it bites. This can be helped though by pulling the shot apart slightly just a little bit so that when a fish takes the bait it feels the weight building up slowly rather than all at once. Another thing that you can do to improve bite indication is to have a shot or two, a smaller one, down from your bulk, closer to your hook. These are sometimes called telltale shot. This shot helps you know if a fish has come down, picked up the bait and lifted up off the bottom. Of course most of the time when you're float fishing the float will just pull under when you get a fish because the fish takes the bait and swims off with it. However, sometimes they'll just suck it up and lift up off the bottom. That's where the telltale shot comes into play. The weight of it is alleviated as the fish lifts up off the bottom, resulting in the float just lifting a little bit. A lift of the float like this is definitely worth striking at. Now let's talk about plumbing the depth. Finding the right depth can make all the difference with float fishing. And to accurately find the depth, you'll need to use a plummet. To effectively use a plummet, you have to have just a couple of locking shot around your float. This ensures maximum buoyancy and will mean if your float is pulled down, it is done so by the plummet, not too much shot. Firstly, attach your plummet to your line like this. Set your float around a metre from your plummet or whatever depth you believe the water to be. Make a cast to the spot that you want to fish. If your float disappears under, then you're set too shallow. And if your float lays flat, then you're set too deep. Adjust your float accordingly and make another cast. 
Keep deepening or shallowing until you make a cast and your float sits perfectly with just the tip showing. You are now fishing at the exact same depth as your swim. Be prepared throughout your session depending on the species that you're fishing for and the conditions that you're faced with to make your rig deeper or shallower. For example, if you're getting bites straight after you cast in and you think the fish are up in the water, make the rig a bit shallower and try that. Conversely, if you're casting in and the wind is catching your float, drifting it out of position, you may want to make the rig deeper, laying some line across the bottom and ensuring the rig is fixed in position and not drifting off. You can keep making it a little bit deeper at a time until your float stays still. However, we would say a good place to start is fishing dead depth, as that tends to work quite well from the off. So that was how to find the depth on a still water with a plummet. However, if you're on a stream or river, you can find the depth without a plummet. Simply guess the depth of the water in front of you and begin to let your float drift downstream. If your float drifts all the way down your swim, then you're set under depth. If your float drags under like this, then you're set too deep and the hook or the split shot are dragging along the bottom. Ideally, you'll keep deepening the rig until it begins to drag under, then shallow up just a few centimetres. With your depth set just a little bit shallower than the river, once you've baited up and are actually fishing, the float will only drag under when a fish has taken your bait. So now that you've found your depth and started fishing, you'll need to know what to do when you get a bite. A bite from a fish can be signalled by the float dragging under, lifting up or dragging along the surface. If any of those things happen and you see unusual movements on your float, it's time to strike. A strike is a positive lift of the rod to tighten up the line all the way down to your float and hook the fish. If you strike too hard or fast, you might snap your line or lose the fish, but if you strike too slowly, then the fish will regularly spit out the bait before you actually manage to hook it. So timing is quite key. If you're missing bites while striking quite quickly, you could experiment with waiting a little bit longer before you strike or changing the depth of your rig. When float fishing on a lake, the wind can catch your float and line and pull it out of place, affecting your accuracy whilst fishing. To counteract that, it's good to sink your line. The way we would advise sinking your line when waggler fishing is to cast a little bit further than your spot. Once the floats hit the surface, put your rod tip beneath the surface and make a few quick turns on the handle. This will actually pull the float down and it will sink away from view. Once you've retrieved a little bit back towards where you want to fish, you'll then get your rod tip and whip it back up above the surface. It might look a little bit strange and it's slightly hard to master the first few times you do it, but that movement of whipping it back up again will often sink the last little bit of line that hasn't gone under whilst you were reeling. It's important to note that when you're fishing on a river, you don't want to sink your line. Instead, you want it right up on the surface, behind the float as it heads off down river. The last point that I'd like to cover in this video is how to lose feed. There's two main feeding approaches that we like to use and it kind of depends on what shotting pattern we're using. When fishing with a strung out shotting pattern and a slow sinking hook bait, our aim is to bring in as many fish as possible into the swim and get them competitively feeding. The way we like to do that is by feeding little and often. It might just be a small pinch of maggots in the catapult or a little handful of corn, but by feeding little and often throughout the session, you bring in maximum numbers of fish into the swim and get them feeding competitively, making them quite easy to catch over time. However, this method tends to work best for smaller shoaling fish. You might be getting a big shoal of roach or rod or perch or something feeding in your swim, and that can work really great fishing that slow sinking bait. However, that little and often feeding pattern can encourage many, many small fish into your swim. If you're more interested in catching bigger fish, but potentially less of them, you may be using a bolt shotting pattern. That will mean that your bait will be bombing to the bottom, getting down near the deck where those bigger fish are, avoiding the small fish up near the surface. When we're doing this style of fishing with a bulk shot, getting the bait down near the bottom, we like to probably feed a handful or two every hour or so. This means that there's less food falling through the water column, meaning less small fish are likely to get involved and intercept your bait. Another way to get your bait down to the bottom, away from small fish and delivering food to the mouths of the bigger ones, is to mix up some ground bait. You can just mix up some ground bait and boil that in on its own, or if you want to deliver like corn, casters, maggots and stuff to the deck without small fish intercepting it on the way down, you can mix those baits into your ground bait, boil that up and boil it into your swim. We will often start a session fishing for bream, carp, tench, that sort of thing, 
by simply making a few big balls of ground bait, bombing them into the swim, leaving it for a little while, getting those fish's confidence up, before then fishing over the top later on. There's also nothing to say that you can't start off a session with a few big balls of ground bait down on the deck, but then feed little and often later on in the session, should the numbers of fish in your swim die down. It's all about experimenting on each water that you fish and finding something that tends to work. If your lake's full of little stuff and you want to just bag up, it might be little and often. If you want to get through to those bigger fish, then it could be that you're best off fishing the bait and weight approach and feeding less often, but with more bait each time. Our advice if you're a beginner and you want to just get out there and get a few bites is to fish with maggots and feed just a little pinch over your float every 30 seconds to a minute. That's probably the best way to encourage small fish up into your swim so you can start off getting some bites. Float fishing is a style of angling which is productive and equally enjoyable. We hope this video helps you learn something. Stick a comment down below if you have any questions and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. We definitely advise clicking here to watch a playlist of instructional videos for those of you who are getting into your fishing and want to learn more. See you guys soon.